Welcome to uh, Basics of Farming course. Uh, um, today we are going to talk about um, another favorite topic uh, which is uh, pest prevention and pest management. See, uh, the general view on pests is that they are dangerous or they are threatening your yield, they are threatening your plants and they need to be destroyed. But uh, don't you think that uh, pests are telling you something else, that your plants are weak? When your plants are weak, the pests can attack you. When the plants are uh, strong, the pests cannot attack them. So, the focus should be plant positive approach rather than the pest negative approach. Pests are bad is the pest negative approach. Plants are strong. How to make the plant strong is the plant positive approach. So, a lot of investment of energy and time has to go into making the plant strong before you start dealing with pests. So step one is make the plant strong by making the soil extremely good. Step two is do as many preventive measures as possible before the pest starts uh, attacking the plants. The last is deal with pests. And remember, even if you use organic sprays, they kill good, good insects also. And in a typical complex ecosystem of uh, farm, I don't even recommend using any sprays unless you have to protect your crop and you have no choice. Because there are the good insects and there are the bad insects. There are the good bacteria and there are the pathogens. There are the good earthworms and there are the nematodes. So if you are using a nematicide, is there any guarantee that the worms don't get killed? You should ask the person selling you organic nematicide this question first. If I spray and drench this nematicide in the soil because nematodes are killing my plants, will it hurt the earthworms in any way? And uh, we should also ask, have you tested this nematicide on earthworms and made sure earthworms are not affected? So those questions are the questions the farmer should ask to do good farming practice. The first step which is plant health, right? So in terms of plant health, this is the stuff you need to think about. One is, um, is the plant doing a lot of photosynthesis and is the plant ma manufacturing simple sugars or if the plant is doing a lot of complex carbohydrates it means it's typically healthy and this is stage one of uh, plant health. The stage two of plant health the plant should be making a lot of proteins and um, the proteins made by the plant makes the plant extremely strong. And uh, the third stage of plant health is the plant must be manufacturing a lot of lipids. Lipids are essential oils uh, secreted by the leaf surface of the plant and lipids are needed for the plant's own health. And uh, what typically happens is anything in excess secreted by the plant, the plant is using its root system to release the nutrients into the soil. The plants usually store all the nutrients in the soil and uses the soil as a storehouse. Generally people think that water goes up and along with nutrients and the plant is taking nutrients. I am really sorry about, sorry it's not true. Um, the plants actually give a lot of nutrients to the soil. That is why having live roots in the soil all the time is extremely important for the health of the plant, health of the soil. and. Um, the health of the soil is the health of the plant and the health of the plant is the health of the soil. So there is a deep connection between the two. A healthy plant makes the soil healthy and a healthy soil makes the plant healthy. A sick plant makes the soil sick. So it's a, it's a, it's a system where you have to think holistically. Um, when the plant secretes all these juices into the soil, a very complex ecosystem develops in the soil. What I mean by that is a complex ecosystem where the survival of the fittest is determined by nature. Typically in an Amazon jungle, the animals that cannot survive will be killed or they will die naturally. So same way any pathogen attacking the root system of the plant will have no chance 
if you can build a very complex ecosystem below the soil. So for this purpose, if you ensure that the soil is in top condition when you plant and when you ensure you use the open pollinated seed or heirloom seed which naturally fits in that region, then the plant or the seed has genetic information to help it find the nutrients in that particular region of the world or the country. So today we are dominated by hybrid seeds and uh, hybrid seeds sometimes limit the genetic potential which means for gaining some genetic potential we have to lose some genetic potential and anytime there is a human intervention there is doubt whether the intervention was done right. So typically hybrid seeds need more help in terms of healthier soil compared to regular local seeds that have been growing in that particular soil for generations. So a local seed might need less pest prevention and less care compared to the hybrid seed. But hybrid seeds is what are typically used by most farmers because uh, it has been noticed that hybrid seeds give better yields. Uh, compared to the uh, local seed and the second problem is uh, availability. Uh, for example, uh, if you are in commercial production in farming, you have to end up using hybrid seed because the seed should be always available. And a person doing let us say 60 to 100 crops cannot think of having his own seed bank because it is very hard to have 100 percent seed bank for all your vegetables. And it's a very special effort in involving a lot of investment. So you end up having hybrid seeds, um, you know, to grow plants. And hybrid seeds are susceptible to disease. And um, the soil has to support hybrid seeds for the plant to be very, very healthy. There are a lot of hybrid seeds developed that will prevent certain diseases from occurring into them. Occurring, occurring in the plant. So um, what they do is uh, they introduce disease to the plants um, and uh, the plants that survive the disease they collect the seeds from uh, those plants and typically the offspring from those plants are healthy and can fight the disease. This is one way of uh, fighting pests and disease. But in general if your soil is extremely healthy any seed can take on disease. Thank you so much.